As one would assume, a heart condition usually refers to an issue with the heart. However, some heart conditions can often affect much more than just the heart. PVD and PAD are heart conditions that affect the flow of blood through the veins and can cause serious problems in the legs, brain, and heart. TGMC would like to take a moment to discuss key aspects of this serious condition. All right, joining me on To Your Health, Dr. Peter Fail. We can say world-renowned because they are all over the world teaching and doing procedures. Doc, welcome to the program today. Thank you. All right, first of all, PVD, peripheral vascular disease. Talk about it, what is it? It is a, uh, an obstruction uh, commonly referred to in the lower extremities and your legs, uh, reducing the flow to the muscles, to the foot. Um, its importance has to do with the, the uh, what I would say, what I tell my patients, who it sleeps with, so to speak. And so what we're interested in PVD is not specifically the flow to the legs, but the other comorbidities, the, the heart disease, the stroke, and things that it's commonly associated with. With every disease, and maybe every or close to, there are symptoms that go along with it. Any different with this? No, absolutely. This, this, uh, the most classic symptom for this is actually cramping in the legs when you walk. That's, that would be the most textbook sign that somebody would say, when I walk uh, so many feet, my calves or my thighs actually start to cramp up and I have to stop walking uh, in order for them to relieve. Give me a couple of minutes so I can start walking again. That's the most classic sign. However, there are a lot of other signs that come up. Some people will talk about just heaviness in their legs. Some people will notice sometimes uh, won't have any cramping, but I'll have sort of a fatigue where they just overall feel tired. Uh, other more severe symptoms would be ulcers in their feet, uh, loss of hair, loss of toenails, things like that, where they seem to, seem to slow, uh, heal very, very slowly. Okay. The causes of PAD, can you give us some causes? Sure, and, that, and those are the same things that we see with heart disease, so high cholesterol, uh, high blood pressure, diabetes, smoking, much more prevalent in, in PAD than other uh, things. Uh, if your mom and dad had heart disease, uh, those are very, very important to realize that that probably a higher association with it. All right. Who would be most at risk for this disease? Can you go over a few of those? Sure, smokers. Smokers, without a doubt, uh, by far and wide. Uh, and uh, although uh, this can be seen in a lot of patients, this is really a smoker's disease. And uh, for those people who have issues with smoking and are smokers, those are the most common uh, problems. The other one would be diabetics. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, anybody who has elevated cholesterol, uh, anybody who's hypertensive is at risk for this. Okay, and there you see the list in front of you at home for sure, so we appreciate uh, the most at risk. So you may want to jot that down. Also, it says people 50 years of age and older. Is that when you start well, looking for? Well, that's when you start to see it, and that doesn't mean we don't see it in younger individuals. Uh, you know, it's, it would be uncommon to see it in a teenager, very, very uncommon. There are some genetic components that you may see something like that, but very, very uncommon to see obstructive disease in young people. Uh, so, uh, although 50 is sort of the magic number, we do see it in younger individuals, that being the 30s or 40s. Uh, that's more rare, but uh, we have had individuals who do uh, uh, express uh, blockage at the time. Well, it seems like a big word, and you probably know it better. Homocysteine, is that Homocysteine. right? Homocysteine. Homocysteine is actually an amino acid. And uh, if you actually have elevated levels of homocysteine, that's a, a blood uh, test that we'd easily draw, then you're at higher risk for atherosclerotic disease or premature atherosclerotic disease. So that would be somebody uh, who really has a profound uh, problem with homocysteine that we may see it in a younger individual than in an older individual. All right, hold that thought. We're going to take a break. Hear from Terrebonne General Medical Center. We'll be right back with Dr. Peter Fail. Don't go away. specialists and you can do amazing things cardiac care at TGMC it all begins here all right welcome back we're with dr. Peter fail and of course we're talking about 
uh, PVD and PAD and all those things that go in between, so to speak. Other conditions that can develop from PAD, what would they be? Probably the worst case scenario would be called critical limb ischemia. And what that would result in is basically because of the obstruction or because of the blockage in the uh, blood flow to the leg, that a ulcer has formed and now it does not heal. The problem with any sort of trauma, and, and so the, the typical scenario would be uh, having vascular disease and stepping on a grandchild's toy and you get a little bit of a cut in your foot. Uh, the metabolic demand increases in that area and there's not enough blood supply to meet that demand. The ulcer doesn't heal, it continues to fester, the bone gets infected and it winds up in an amputation. Okay. So that would really be the worst case scenario. So it really is about just blood supply getting exactly, there. Exactly, exactly. Now, the, as we said earlier, probably our biggest concern uh, with PAD is its markers for heart attacks and strokes. And so that's the really the big issue for it is although you may have a blockage in your leg that maybe we can treat medically or maybe we don't need to do anything about, but it is a harbinger for heart attacks and strokes. And that really means that we need to aggressively look at your heart and your carotid arteries, if you will, to make sure that you're not at risk for those. Okay. How do you test for PAD? Simplest is just basically test for a pulse in the foot. That's the very simple thing. If you're, if you're concerned that you have PAD, uh, looking for a pulse in the top of your foot or in the inside behind the ankle is a very simple thing. There are other a little bit more sophisticated tests. The first one would be an AI, uh, ABI or an ankle, ankle brachial index, which is basically a blood pressure in the arm and compared to the a blood pressure in your ankle. And it really should be one. And if they're both exactly the same, you don't have any obstruction. And then we can see a degradation of that, uh, that uh, pressure. So if your uh, blood pressure was 120 in your arm and it was only 60 in your leg, then you have an ABI of 0.5, and that says you have some critical disease. So matching is good. Matching is good. So if you have one, if it's one, you're good. Or if it's a little bit higher, it's good. You don't want to get, if it gets very, very high, then it's indicative of some calcium, you're not compressing the artery. Okay. How do you treat it? If Once you find it, what do you do to treat it? Well, the, for the first thing is medication. And so why, why did you get peripheral vascular disease? Uh, did you get it because you were smoking? And if so, then you need to stop smoking. Did you get it because smoking and elevated cholesterol, diabetes, and all those are important. Uh, we then can go on to uh, more sophisticated methods for treatment. That would be angiography and angioplasty and stenting if need be. Uh, there are some other uh, things that are done in the cath lab with atherectomies and lasers and, and uh, drugs, et cetera. Uh, and lastly, surgery, if need be, uh, where we can actually bypass the obstruction like we do in the heart, which is bypass the blockage itself. Okay. Let's bring up uh, some more graphics on the screen. We're going to talk about how to prevent peripheral artery disease. And, Doc, I'm sure a lot of ways to prevent it. Here right. they are. Absolutely. Stop smoking with, with by, by far and wide. Like I said, this is really a smoker's disease. And so getting somebody to stop smoking, although very difficult, is extremely important. For those people with diabetes and, and really trying to get their blood pressures, their blood sugars controlled, that's very, very important. Exercise regularly. And, and the whole idea with just going for a walk, and the more walking you do, the more that you will recruit collaterals. You'll develop sort of a, a secondary, what you, some people talk about a natural bypass, where they actually get a supply to the foot, which is good. Monitoring your blood sugars and your cholesterol, making sure that if you need them, that you're on the medication for that, and lower them necessary. And obviously everything we tell our patients who have heart disease is avoid the fatty foods, avoid the cholesterol foods, all those things are very, very important. All right. People watching who want to learn more, get more information, how can they get it? Uh, talk to the primary care physician, number one. Uh, ask for an ABI if they, if they think that they have. There's a, a, a lot of patients that we see that get referred to us uh, who've been treated for arthritis and come to find out that they really don't have very much arthritis, but they really do have PAD, and uh, a simple ABI could uh, detect that very quickly. Uh, if further testing needs to be done, we're, we're uh, at CIS, we're able to do that. Really no excuse. I mean, you, you sort of lay it out. People just have to follow the blueprint, don't right. they? Right, and it's, you know, a lot of times, you know, one of the problems with this, as we talked earlier, is that it's with an older individual, so 50 years or older, and so a lot of times this cramp in the legs, they think, is it's just arthritis. And sometimes it is. Arthritis yeah. is ubiquitous over the age of 50. Uh, however, a lot of times it's not. So if you are a smoker, if you're diabetic, if your cholesterol is not what it's supposed to be, uh, if your blood pressure is a little bit higher than it's supposed to be and you have cramps in your legs, uh, you really do need to think that it may be peripheral arterial disease. All right, Doc, thanks for joining us on the show once again. We appreciate it. Thank you very it. much. All right, stick around. We'll be right back with Nichols State University. It's all next on Bayou Time.